got a great uh, ceremony happening here this morning. And Kelly, is there any more folks, any more from the committee? Okay. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, I appreciate everybody taking the time on an early Saturday morning to in remembrance and celebration here today. Um, there's some very important people I want to introduce before we get into the the ceremony, um, and I think it's important to recognize the one October Memorial Committee, and those are the individuals seated right here to my front. Can you stand up and wave? <laughs> those are the individuals that are working tirelessly to um, figure out what we're going to do, right? Figure out what we're going to do and how we can have in perpetuity and remembrance with the memorial. And they're doing a fantastic job and I appreciate, and everybody else appreciates exactly what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve. So there's other individuals I think it's appropriate to introduce um, seated behind me and I will go through them individually. Um, and if you wouldn't mind um, showing some recognition for them. So we got Congresswoman Susie Lee. We have Senator Jackie Rosen. Uh, Attorney General Aaron Ford. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Lisa Cano Burkhead. And some individuals that are very significant in this celebration and this orchestration and, and what we do in the county on a daily basis. And I appreciate everything they do. And that's Clark County Commissioner Tick Sigerbloom. <laughs> Clark County Commissioner, Clark County Commissioner Justin Jones. Clark County Commissioner Marilyn Kirkpatrick. And Clark County Commissioner Michael Naff. And another very important person sitting up here, even though she hates the recognition, is the County Manager Yolanda King. <laughs> and obviously there's other people up here that I'll introduce them as we go through the ceremony. So once again, let's get started. So we'll start with the presentation of the colors. Honor Guard. Please stand if you can. And we'll have the national anthem with Sam Riddle. Oh, 
say Can you see By the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the pale polar fight Oh, the ramparts we wild we're so gallantly streaming And the rockets red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, 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 say does that star-spangled Remain standing for the invocation. Chaplain Center. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we pause to remember the tragedy of five years ago, we are grieved for so many who lost their lives and their families who've had to cope with those losses over the years. We pray that your comfort, strength, and hope will be with them as they continue to heal from the past. Although nothing will replace their loved ones, we are grateful for the stories of healing and hope from victims and family members who are rebuilding their lives. We're thankful for a community that has done so much to help with that healing. Today is a day of hope that helps us realize how resilient we can be and that if we work together, there's nothing we cannot accomplish. I pray that you would help our memories heal from the traumatic past so that we can focus on a future of optimism and hope as we hear of so many who are healing and growing through the pain of the past. Thank you, God, for being the ultimate hope giver. Bring that hope to everyone here today so that we may pass it to everyone in this valley. Amen. Thank you, Dean. Uh, if you may, please take your seat. So at this time, it's my honor to introduce the governor of the state of Nevada, uh, Steve Sisolak, uh, to say a few words. Good morning. 
Thank you, Sheriff, for that kind introduction, and thank you to all of you for being here today. It's been five years. Five years since all of our lives changed forever. And our city and our state changed forever. Five years ago today, a heinous act of violence rained down on our city, our state, and our country. 58 plus two people were killed that night. But five years later, we will never forget their light. The victims of this senseless act of violence, their families and friends will forever be in our hearts and prayers. And we will never forget, never forget the outpouring of love, kindness, and support from Las Vegas, our state, and across the country and the globe. Because of this support and the nonstop dedication of those in our community to protect one another and heal together, we will forever be Vegas strong. God bless you. God bless each of the families that are here with us today. Resilience is defined as the ability to adapt to difficult situations, to gather the strength to overcome challenges. Resilience is what defines us as a community as we gather this morning on the fifth year anniversary of 1 October. Our community includes not only those of you who live here in Southern Nevada, it also includes everyone who's here, who was here that night for the Route 91 Festival, the injured, the family members of those who lost their lives. A cross-section of people came from all over the United States to enjoy some music and have a good time. One of our own officers, 34-year-old Charleston Hartfield, was with his wife Veronica at the concert. When the shots rang out, Charlie immediately took action to save lives of others until a bullet ultimately took his life. We also need to remember and honor the stories of all the everyday heroes that night. Those who took care of the person next to them despite not even knowing their names. Those who banded together to escape the hail of bullets. They too were heroes in the face of evil. Charlie shared some of his life's lessons with us while working at LVMPD that seem especially impactful this morning. Find a purpose be of service to others, and inspire others by your actions. So many of you spoke vol volumes that night with your actions to help others and protect others. Charlie would have been especially proud of you. You are showing your resilience this morning by being here and supporting each other. We were all changed that night. Together as a community, we can remain resilient. Together as a community, we will remain Vegas strong. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Gibson. Good morning, and on behalf of my colleagues on the Clark County Commission, we welcome all of you on this beautiful, beautiful morning. On this somber, somber occasion, I look out uh, at this group today and I remember what we meant when we joined together to be and declare ourselves as Vegas Strong. We were a community that was moved by the grief and disbelief we experienced. We are still united in those sentiments today. And we're kept together by our keen sense of community, a realization that each one of us can make a difference for good. In reading through the messages that were sent to us from other communities around the world and uh, notes that were left between folks here in town, the sense of community mourning is palpable. And those messages brought back to me 
uh, the grief that we all felt that day. One said, God bless the families left behind. And that has been our prayer ever since. Another, forever connected, never forgotten. And that has been our objective ever since. And finally, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And that brings us together and unites us. There are a few messages that resonated with me and reminded me of why we're here today. We join in mourning the tragic losses of one October. We do so by celebrating the unique stories of those who perished. We do this through love, not only for those lost that night and over following weeks and months, but also for the families who are now charged with remembering for us and helping us get to know what they remember. And we remember and celebrate an incredible response as a community. Five years ago, we dug deep to show ourselves for who we really are and who we really were then. And for the families who lost loved ones and those affected by the tragedy who suffer yet, we remember them. And we remembered them that night. Through this experience, we allowed the world to, to see us for how we really are as we experienced public grief together. In fact, we are a community of people with a strength beyond measure, and we have been forever changed and strengthened by a terrible, terrible tragedy. We've never been a community that allowed the perceptions of others to define us, so we did what we know how to do. We rose from the ashes of our tragedy. We confronted hate with love, darkness with light. And that light shines as brightly today as it did as we emerged Vegas strong. No one had to tell us what to do. We all wondered what we might do as we made an effort to make a difference. And it was a wonderful thing to learn that so many wanted to be able to make a difference. Since that time, we've come together, not just to celebrate in memorial services, but we have the One October Memorial Committee that was formed to plan and help us construct what will be a permanent memorial to the lives lost and to all those who were victimized that night. The permanency of this memorial will allow those who survived the night to convene in a location that allows them to reflect, search, and find comfort. And for the families of those lost, and those otherwise severely affected, it will be a powerful symbol that we're for forever united with them in the experience that defined a time in life that we all wish we could forget. I also think this memorial will show future generations and those too young to remember that night that we need to shine light into the shadows because by doing so we remove the hiding places for those who are set on doing harm. Each life lost, each victim mattered then, matters now. The thing that is most poignant to me is that the families left behind and the survivors of that night are the eternal flame of remembrance in this tragedy and the memories that you are charged with carrying forward and helping us so they never fade. Out of our collective pain came an abiding grace, a desire to be better than ourselves and to contribute something meaningful to create a better community, to help people who needed help whether we knew them or not. We did that in so many ways which we all observed and all of that was on view for the world to see. We set an example that night. And our community can be proud of how we responded to the darkness of the day. We should remember that, out, that the outpouring of love and support we received from each other and from across the country and around the world. It's important to recognize strength and resiliency 
And we continue to demonstrate that as a community every day and with each passing year. As we continue down the path of creating a lasting memorial, it's important that we call upon the feelings of that time to ensure that those sediments are reflected in what is constructed. And to do this, we've reached out to the community once again. The One October Memorial Committee is asking that people visit its website and share ideas for the memorial, as well as what they call creative expressions. Those creative expressions might take the form of drawings, paintings, photos, poems, music, and more. The submissions will be reviewed by expert design teams that will devise then proposals for the memorial, and up to five teams will respond and present designs, and from them one will be selected and presented as a recommendation from the One October Memorial Committee to the Board of County Commissioners. From there, we'll select a final design, and then we'll get about the business of doing what you must when something so important must be erected. From there, <coughs> we will s allow the entire world to see in a single place a representation of what this community is all about. At the conclusion of today's ceremony, we invite you to visit our Rotunda Gallery where you can meet with members of the Memorial Committee and staff about the memorial process. There are some exemplary exhibits inside the Rotunda and we hope that you all get an opportunity to view them. As we navigate through complex feelings today and as we remember, I share with you a quote, grief is the price we pay for love. I couldn't have come up with a better way to say it, and we can thank the late Queen Elizabeth for that one. I think I speak for everyone in this community when I say thank you. Thank you to all those who have been willing to allow us into your lives, to learn about those who cannot be here, to show their lives to us, to trust us with the memories that are most precious to you, and being so committed that we will never forget as a community and will not allow anyone who comes after us to forget the important lessons learned through the losses that we experienced that fateful night. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gibson. At this time, I'll ask Angela McElduhan to the dais and Angela is the mother of Jordan McElduhan. Come on up. No? Thank you all so much for this opportunity to speak to everyone today. It's so hard to believe that it's been five years since we heard the unimaginable news that Jordan had been killed in the shooting. He'd gone to the concert with his beloved girlfriend, Amber, for two years in a row, and they had so much fun, and he didn't come home. He was just 23, just a few days away from his 24th birthday. We're one of the four Canadian families that lost a loved one that night. Our three beautiful Canadian ladies, Tara Smith-Rowe, Caleb Medic, and Jessica Klimchuk were also lost that night. We've done our very best over the past years to represent not only our boy, but these ladies and our families and their families. We've carried their photos, we've decorated their trees at the Healing Garden with flags and other Canadian paraphernalia. And if you've been to the garden, you can't miss Jordan's tree. I, of course, also represent our 58 today, and that's a tough one. I always find the video that's played at the end of the ceremony to be the hardest to watch because it's then you see the sheer magnitude of our collective loss. Those beautiful people who died so needlessly and their families left behind. Jordan was a very proud Canadian. He died wearing his Canada flag bandana on his head. A survivor from Canada saw Jordan and Amber the night before in their Canadian gear and she took a candid photo of them without them seeing because she thought it was cool that they were all decked out. 
She was horrified to learn the next day that Jordan was one of the victims, and she sent me that photo, which I will treasure always. And speaking of Canadian flags, is this the right time to ask for a Canadian flag to be shown, flown here at the morning ceremonies? <laughs> and maybe for a small one at the Healing Garden, not as big as yours, but just a small one. I am pretty sure the permanent memorial will have one, fingers crossed. In preparing for my speech today, I look back at all that's happened in the past five years, and it's been a lot, and we need all day to tell you all the stories. So I thought I'd tell you a few things, a few stories of things that you might not have heard about, and then I'll tell you about Jordan. And I'm going to focus on our experience with the people of Las Vegas over the past five years. Starting at the beginning, we caught the first flight out to Vegas from Vancouver on October 2nd, early in the morning, and we're in Vegas just after 10 a.m., we were on a mission, and we weren't leaving without our boy. We were taken to the police station initially, where we first met our corner contact, Felicia Borla, and she's just continued to be such a huge support to us in so many ways. We then all moved to the convention center, or the family reunification center, where we'd spend the next five days, all day, every day. And it was at that convention center that we witnessed firsthand the incredible response from your community. And we could also see the sheer magnitude, once again, of the number of people impacted. When Jordan's body was finally released to go home, and this was no small undertaking, crossing a border with no death certificate in hand, it took a lot of important people from two countries working together to make this happen, and we were ready to head home. At the airport on the way home, our airport contact ushered us through the airport to the security lines. Well, by now I'm carrying Jordan's clear bag with his belongings in it, with his police file number, and I'm horrified at the thought of opening it up. Practical things. Then the TSA agents not only opened a private lane for us, and they didn't make us open anything, and then they cried and hugged us too, and such a show of incredible kindness. I don't generally get hugged by the TSA agents. but <laughs> Jordan's funeral was held aptly on Friday the 13th. And we held a big reception for him afterwards to celebrate his life. And many, dis many different organizations helped us with funeral costs. One local man paid for a good portion of our after party, as we called it. And I thought you might like to hear this story. The late Tony Shea from Zappos.com had reached out to us. And I often wonder, still, who were those people that made things happen in behind the scenes that quietly put the right people in front of us over the years? And he offered to help us. So he paid for a portion of Jordan's service. And when we returned to Vegas later in October, we went to meet and thank Tony and his Zappos for good team in person. And they invited us to spend the day with them on their campus. And it was really an amazing experience. He was a true visionary for Las Vegas. And his death was a big loss for your community. We also heard about something incredibly special through the Canadian Consulate in 2018. Congressman Reuben Kiwen, the U.S. Representative from Nevada's 4th Congre Congressional District, gave a speech about Jordan on the floor of the House of Representatives. And as for the speeches, Representative Kiwen actually spoke about each of the victims over several months. So he was only able to speak once per day and for one minute. And we were sent the video to watch it. And there's a big photo of Jordan and he did it for all the family. It took him months. And just for him to take the time to do that, to remember all the families. And I just remember thinking, is this hard to believe our son from a small town in, in Canada is being remembered on such a grand stage, that people care and would do something like that. Like, it's just remarkable. So after we got home and held Jordan's service, we were disappointed that we hadn't had time to go and see his cross at the Welcome to Las Vegas sign. A local organization that flies sick children around the country for medical treatment, a local company, Miracle Flights, heard that we wanted to come back down and see the crosses, and they sent us two plane tickets to do just that a month after the shooting. When we arrived, their CEO and our now dear friend, Mark Brown, picked us up himself, and he drove us personally to deliver all of the thank yous, and there were lots from the funeral home, police station, fire station, corner office, the list was long. And Mark also gave me my little therapy fair, Seymour, which many of you have seen around. 
We got to see Jordan's cross, which was amazing, and the following year we got to meet in person the late Greg Zanis, who built and delivered all the crosses. We're so grateful for him. And let me share with you some stories about our local sports teams. The Vegas Golden Knights. No words could ever express our gratitude for the kindness that the families have received since the shooting. Alan and I were invited in to see the big banner in person, the one that hangs in the rafters, and of course Jordan's name up close. And we were fortunate to meet that day and several times since then, the team president, Kerry Boobles. He loves seeing photos of us in our Jordy Mac 58 VGK jerseys, a few here today. And especially the ones of Al skating on the frozen lake at our cabin, wearing it. And we're so grateful to him, to Bill Foley, and the whole VGK team for always taking the time to honor our family. They never forget. They're always there for us. And when the Las Vegas Raiders Stadium was being built, we had the opportunity to buy a brick and have Jordan's name put on it at the front entrance. Well, we weren't allowed to have a Canadian flag on it, to our chagrin, but we were still excited to go and see it last year. Well, the first time we saw it had gum on it, so we had to take a toothbrush and give it a good cleaning, and we do that every time we go. And the Raiders, too, always change the stadium lights on October 1st, and they scroll the names of our loved ones over the course of the day and evening. And I still remember the first time I saw Jordan's name on that huge screen. It still seems surreal. We are grateful for what they do for the families. We're hoping to go to the game tomorrow, so if you have tickets, hook us up. <laughs> We've been NASCAR season ticket holders at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for many years, and Jordan used to come down, enjoy coming down with us, and he loved Las Vegas. March of 2018 was the opening race of the season for NASCAR. And chatting with President Chris Powell about how they would honor the 58 on the first race of the season, they did just that. The grassy infield was adorned with the number 58 and Chris did a beautiful speech to honor the victims. I spoke as well as Mayor Goodman. Just at the end, racers, local racers, Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch popped up onto the stage and presented Alan and I with the most incredible helmet, all lacquered and signed. It's gorgeous, we treasure it, and Jordan would love it. It was definitely a highlight of our year. Chris still keeps in touch with us to see how we're doing. The team over there is amazing, and we're grateful for what they've done for us. There's so many in the community to mention, but another local businessman, Martin Mueller, along with his wife, Delilah, have also been incredibly generous to the 58 families over the past five years. We're so grateful to call them our friends. They quietly support us all, and we thank them for that. We've also been supported by the Resiliency Center, who paid for a lot of my psychologist appointments. Yes, it turns out joy and sadness can coexist. And we thank them for all that they continue to do to support the families and the survivors. The 5K will be run or walked on Sunday as always, and we're always thankful to those who put that on. It's always a fun day and great to run with the Corner Strong team and many others. We like to take selfies with everyone who has a Canadian on their shirts. There are other people who support us, like Tommy Marr, who started the Honor 58 movement and who travels around the country doing acts of kindness in memory of those lost in mass shootings. Now, Tommy is one of the most selfless people I know. Thank you, Tommy, for what you do for us from Route 91, but for what you continue to do for others who have suffered the loss that we have. Way too many. Survivors. What can we say about the survivors? Much like some, many don't like the 58 to be referred to as angels, some of those who were present that horrific night don't like to be called survivors. Forgive me today because it's an easier term to refer to you all. We've met so many of them, many of you, and have formed some true bonds and friendships with them. Some are so incredibly selfless and they do so much to support our families. From the Angels game in California, thank you Melissa, to the foundations that were set up, to the annual event that Connie and Shauna put on like the concert later tonight, they give their all to support us. Thank you all. They make sure our 58 will always be remembered. <laughs> the families of the 58. Well, what's there to say about this? One unexpected gift that we've received through all of this is the amazing relationships we have formed with some of the families of the 58. Some lost a sibling, some a spouse, some like us lost a child. 
there is this bond between us that comes from a place of understanding, of compassion for each other, and for a shared, albeit horrific, common bond. We all know what it feels like to have our lives laid bare for all the world to see and to have lost a member of our family. We lift each other up and we check in on one another. We truly treasure these friendships. So who was this boy, Jordan, you ask? Growing up on our acreage, he was an outdoorsy boy his whole life. He was go big or go home all the way. He was incredibly talented at pretty much anything he took on, from riding bikes to dirt bikes, snowboarding to snowmobiles, to wakeboarding. There wasn't much he couldn't do. You could say he was a bit spoiled because he wanted for nothing, but he was all we had and we worked so hard to give him his best life. And we're sure glad we did. He was a talented heavy duty mechanic and at only 23 was making a six figure income. He loved his girlfriend, Amber, country music and tattoos. Some of his tattoos were, well, interesting, but aren't they all? I still look for him and I sometimes I see him in the scruffy red beard of a young man in line or a well-worn pair of boots and jeans on someone. I look for his bright blue eyes and the shape of his chin and his big smile. It's never him, but I'll never stop looking for him and yearning for him to come home. It's hard to imagine that he never got to get married or have children or buy his first home. For him, for us to miss out on having grandchildren to spoil. His life was on such a positive trajectory. It's so frustrating that he's missing out on so much. We all are. It's so hard to watch everyone else move on with their lives. We look back at the past five, year, past five years and wonder how we survive without Jordan or Jordy Mac, as he's fondly called. We just celebrated our 35th wedding anniversary Alanite, and it's hard to even use the word celebrate. Birthdays, Christmas, Mother's and Father's Day, they're all sweet torture. And yet, we do what we can to live our lives to the fullest and to always honor our boy. We've set up several amazing scholarships and bursaries at his high school and in his trade school, and we're so happy to help other kids achieve their dreams. Our biggest dream came true a couple months ago when something came to fruition that we'd been working on for four years. We just donated a bike skills park to our local community in Maple Ridge where Jordan grew up. It's very cool and something all ages can use. Elle and I love to walk over there and talk to the kids and their parents. It's called the Jordan McElDoon Legacy Bike Park and we're beyond excited about that. I guess you can hear the recurring theme from today is gratitude. Our hearts are broken and yet at the same time they are full from the love and support we have received. We are in awe of it all. Thank you. Join me in 58 seconds of silence to honor our families. Thank you. I want everybody to see the back of her jacket here because she made me do this. So I think it's important for everybody to see that. So thank, thank you. you. That was wonderful. All right, for our, our rendition of Vegas Strong and Amazing Grace, uh, our performer Sam Riddle um, will continue with the ceremony. Thank you, Sam. Stop 
much of a back row. She's a stand up front, singing every single note. She's tatted up with cut off jeans. She's a country fat American dream. Life is right there in every alley and line. The sad and the hate they can enter her mind. The hellfire rain on down. And it happened in her own hometown. Yeah, you thought that you could break her. If you don't live here long, she's a freedom fighter up all night, a neon lighter. She's a survivor, gonna keep on raising hell. Cause if she don't, then the devil wins. She's going back in, first responding, helping and doing whatever it is she can. Looking at the city of sin from the outside, looking in. You thought that we'd stay down, but you were wrong. He's more of a back roller. He's dusty work boots and a long cut skull. He's a car with cut off sleeves. He's chasing that American dream. Lighting in a soul from a cowboy song Keeps us 14 hour days Just the power and all When you're getting down and running scared He'll be standing up tall With his finger in the air He thought that you could break him But if you don't live here long Cause he's a freedom fighter And up all night Neon lighter, he's a survivor, gonna keep on raising hell. Cause if he don't, then the devil wins. He's going back in, first responding, helping and doing whatever it is he can. Looking at the city of sin from the outside, looking in. He thought that we'd stay down, but you were wrong. Yeah, we're very strong hey. Through the running and the gunning and taking cover We lost fathers and sons and daughters and lovers But now the road to recover No, it won't be long No, it won't be long Cause we're freedom fighters up on nighters Neon lighters, we survivors gonna keep on raising hell. Cause if we don't, then the devil wins. We're going back in, first responding, helping and doing whatever it is we can. Looking at the city of sin from the outside, looking in. Yeah, you thought that we'd stay down, but you were wrong. Oh, our country music hearts beat on. No. Cause we're very strong. Y'all can make some noise if you want to. Hey, babe. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. It's taught my heart to feel and grace my fears relieve. 
How precious is that grace to be the hour I first How sweet the sound It seemed a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found Blind but now I see Blind but now Tree, coat, center, peace. Over, forward. Detail, coat, color guard, forward, forward. I want to thank everybody for coming today. This will conclude our ceremony. But prior to doing that, I want to repeat one line that Angela said in her, her 
fantastic speech, and I want everybody to leave with this. Joy and sadness can coexist, correct? Yeah. Everybody say, say hello to your neighbor, shake their hand, look in their eyes, and say thank you. Thank you for your continued support and remembrance. And remember what Commissioner Gibson said today. We have celebrations throughout the day, and starting with the rotunda here to my right, to your left, and everybody have a wonderful weekend and day. Thank you.